Welcome to floss tube number seven. Um, it's been three weeks since my last video instead of um, instead of my usual two uh, Mondays I need I need to film when I'm alone in the house I um, I can barely manage to do this as it is but I um, I definitely definitely can't um, can't film with my with my husband and son in the house so Mondays are the only day I um, can count on having some alone time in the house to do this and um, and I was really sick last Monday so thus it's been three weeks um I wanted to start off though because um, um, I think I've been neglecting it I wanted to um, make sure I thanked um, in particular um, in particular the, the commenters um, I mean, thank you to everybody who who watches and subscribes and hits the hits the thumbs up button. Um, all of that's wonderful. But um, the best thing about Floss Tube is the commenting because um, if you if you comment, I get to interact with you and um, and you know and I know you're and I know you're watching. And if you if you don't comment, I don't know you're watching. And I um, I haven't been the best commenter myself until. Until after I started doing floss tube, and I realized that, um, and I realized that, that commenting um, is is you know makes a huge difference. And um, now that I'm doing floss tube myself, um, <coughs> excuse me, still slightly still slightly sick. Um, now that I'm doing floss tube myself, it's really been driven home to me how how um, how um, impactful the the comments really are and so I want to thank everybody who, who comments and I have I think I've been responding to everybody so um, I'm really trying so um, anyway um, enough of that uh, I wanted to talk about floss tube a um, couple of people I discovered newly um, these last few weeks one is Tina Fraser. I have it written down spelled F-R-A-S-E-R, -E and I hope that's right. She's um, um, she's relatively new to floss tube. I think she has a few videos out. Um, I can't remember because it's been a few weeks since I since I wrote her down, but um, she has an incredible whip parade. <laughs> so I mean, there's lots of reasons we watch people, right? One of the reasons I watch. Uh, somebody is because um, they stitch the kinds of things I, I like to stitch or um, or I learn from them like somebody like Arlene Cohen or um, or you know Vana or uh, uh, Stitch Bliss Corner you know I, I watch them um, I mean you know sometimes you watch somebody for multiple reasons but in particular I watch those people because I learn something from them some people I like to watch because of the sheer number of, of um, whips and and things that they have you know gives me like the stash queen and um, Sherry Burkett um, you know just gives me lots of ideas um, just lots of variety and some people you know you watch because um, their uh, personality is infectious and um, and they just make you feel good when you watch them they you know their their um, heart comes through in their in their videos and and um, and you like to watch them for that reason but um, Tina Fraser, um, I'm relatively new to her, um, but um, she's going to be one of I'm, she's going to be one of those that I watch because <laughs> of of just how many wonderful uh, how much wonderful eye candy there is in her video is is at least one really good reason to watch her. So go check out Tina Fraser. Um, you know, one of these days I will um, get good at putting links and things below um, in my descriptions. Um, what happens is I film this on Monday and then my husband comes home and I, uh, get, I, he helps me with a couple of things like adding pictures, which doesn't take him very long, but I still need his help with that. Um, cause when I tried to do it, I just failed miserably at it. But, um, and then, and then we get this video uploaded onto YouTube and usually it's bedtime by the time it's done and um, I'm just so anxious to get it up and it um, and it takes time to enter in you know a bunch of information in the description and um, as far as I know I can't do it ahead of time and so anyway you know it's kind of laziness but um, I'm gonna try to uh, I'm gonna try to do that because I definitely appreciate people who put links to 
all the different floss tubers that they talk about in their videos or the different stores or patterns or whatever that's really really helpful and um and i think um i think i'm gonna do that i i don't know i'll have to i'll have to find out but i assume you can enter information like that in descriptions later like you could go down and um and enter information later so like if i didn't enter it you know that night because i was tired and wanted to go to bed and just wanted to get the thing up on youtube i'm guessing i could um go in next day when i feel more leisurely and do it i don't know anyway i'm gonna try to be better about that we'll see um but anyway tina fraser great whip parade um lots of eye candy go check her out um Another new person I discovered, and she's been shouted out by a lot of people, but that's okay, you know, the, the more the merrier, right, is Handmade, H-A-N-M-A-Y-D-E. Lots of you probably, um, if you aren't watching her on YouTube already, um, you are were probably aware of her from Instagram. Um, I've been following her for a long time on Instagram, and she has amazing stitching, and um, she... She may have more. I've watched her first two videos and um and um and she's a lovely person and and but her stitching her stitching is amazing. And um and but another thing that um that I wanted to mention that really struck me in her second video, you know, where she did the usual thing where she thanked everybody for welcoming her and stuff like that like we like we all do. Um she mentioned that she is surprised she even does these videos and I can absolutely relate to that. She said that, you know, she's never enjoyed, never wanted to be, um, be filmed or have her picture taken or anything like that. And, and I can definitely relate to that. The only reason I do these videos is because I was just feeling left out and I just, you know, uh, first I was like, oh, I could never do that. And, you know, but then eventually it just the drive to participate and interact with you guys more fully, um, you know, was enough to get me to do it. But my husband, I've mentioned before, he's a filmmaker, and um, I won't be in his movies. I don't, I mean, I, my, my way of supporting his filmmaking endeavors is to allow the chaos in my house, the set building and the actors and, you know, the what have you. That's, uh, that's my way of being a supportive wife and um I'm not an actor and um and I don't want my pic you know I you know I'm okay about having my picture taken but it's not something I enjoy and I definitely don't um want to be in his movies but here I am making making my own videos for you guys anyway <laughs> I have to do it with the house empty so I can just pretend I'm talking to myself um even though I know in the back of my mind that this is going to be uploaded to you know God knows who to watch but um but, um, you know, I can evidently make floss tube videos and put them up on the internet, um, but I cannot act in his movies. <laughs> so, um, let's see. So, Handmade. H-A-N-M-A-Y-D-E. Oh, she's amazing. Go watch her videos if you aren't already. You probably are already. Um, Andrea at I Heart Cross Stitch. She just recently, I've been watching her for a long time. Um, she's been around a long time. Um, probably most of you already know her too, but she recently did a an anniversary video and her whip parade, it's amazing. Um, and she's a, she's a really nice lady and um, and I'm so glad that, uh, that I get to know her through um, through YouTube and through the stitching groups and things like that. She's just a, she's just a kind, um, a kind person and, and she has beautiful work to admire. So go watch her if you are not watching her yet. So stuff I got. Um, so last time I mentioned to you that I had Halloween at Hawkrun Hall, the pattern on the way. Um, I'm nowhere near ready to start this. I, um, I'm going to do it in the NPIs and those are going to be a Christmas gift to myself. Um, so I'm not going to start it yet, but I thought I'd better get the pattern anyway. And cause I would probably want to start this on Christmas day. Um, and so the pattern arrived and there comes with two, two pictures. There's that one that shows it framed. And there's the other slightly better picture. But, you know, cross-stitch photographs, they never do anything 
justice. But um, I'm I'm super excited about that. I'm going to um, that is going to be my Christmas Day start. Um, if by some miracle I manage to not start it before then. Um, okay, so that is Halloween at Hawker and Hollow. I also bought myself a snag nabbit, which of course um, is just a couple of dollars on one, two, three stitch, and everybody has been been talking about it. It looks like a funny needle with like like a screw type thing at the top. Um, it's very simple to use. I did, I did, I have used it once already, and um, and it works really well. Somebody did a. I wish I'd written it down, but I I can't remember who it was. I know somebody did a, a floss tube video that was a snag nabbit tutorial. I haven't watched that. I haven't watched that video, but it's it was, I was actually really pleased um, with how I was a little. I put this. I used it to fix a stitch on shores at Hawk and Hollow, and this is a big thing. And like it's kind of thick and it's real sharp. But I was a little bit nervous about um, about sticking this. Um, this needle needle slash screw like thing through my through my um, 40 count um, Newcastle and um, but I did and um, I tried it and and it worked really well so um, so snag nab it uh, worth the couple of dollars you pay for it um, another boring thing but I did want to show these anyway these um, are the Daris bags I mentioned a couple of um, a few uh, last video three weeks ago. Um, these are the two inches by three inch variety. Um, I don't like to bobbinate. I have bobbinated. I probably will bobbinate more in the future. Um, but number one, bobbinating takes time. But my main objection to bobbinating is that I find that when you wrap the thread around bobbins, especially if you leave it there for a while, which we do, I mean, I do, right? Some of my threads have been bobbinated for years now. When you take it off the bobbin, you find that there are sharp bends in the um, in the thread. Now, some thread um, pretty well requires bobbinating, like my um, my Riolis Beagle kit. I have to bobbinate that thread because it's one of the Riolis kits that doesn't come nicely organized. The most of, at least the newer, I think. I think it's a matter of when the the kit was produced. Most of the newer kits, um, they come, I'll show you at some point, um, not today, but um, they come super well organized and you don't have to do anything to, to the threads or anything beforehand. But um, in the Realist Beagle kit, the thread just comes in kind of a loosely, um, loosely knotted skein and it's wool slash acrylic thread and I have to bob. It's in single strands, and I have to bobbinate that. Um, I have to wrap it around something, otherwise, because I tried not doing that, and very, very quickly the thread gets becomes a knotted mess. So sticking it and shoving it into a little bag like this would not um, would not work in that circumstance. So I will continue to bobbinate in those odd little circumstances, but. These are very inexpensive, a couple of dollars for a hundred bags. Um, I actually got, my first experience with these was I got 300 of these bags in a box at my local Joann's. They happened to be on sale. It was like two bucks for 300 of them. And, um, but evidently they've stopped carrying them because I, I, they must've been on clearance because I bought it and um, to try them out because I thought they looked handy for beads and things and who knows what. And, um, and I just started shoving my leftover skeins into them as I work. And they are so perfect for that. They're, it's, you know, super fast. You just shove it in there with the, if the tag's loose, you shove it in there with the tag. And, or you can take a Sharpie and write on it if you, if you want to. I usually just shove the tag in there and look at the tag. Um, and, um, and it, it's very compact and, um, and, lazy you don't have to spend the time bobbinating and you don't get the sharp kinks in the in the thread that you can get when you when you bobbinate um and that's my main objection to bobbinating is that that you get those sharp kinks in the thread and then they make they make more knots and stuff as you stitch so 
I'm advocating for these cheap little Daris bags, D-A-R-I-C-E. Um, definitely um, available at one, two, three stitch, and I have hundreds more in my in um, in my future. <laughs> okay, so um, oh, and now the exciting, the exciting thing, um, Jenny Stitcher. I'm. I, if you're not watching her, you need to be watching her. Um, it's spelled Y-A-N-Y Stitcher. Um, and she's a lady from Mexico who does amazing work. Um, you know, she works for a living and she is, is definitely a busy person. But she's she is a fast stitcher apparently <laughs> um it's it's amazing how uh, what progress she makes so quickly and she does beautiful beautiful work um so if you're not watching her um definitely check her out Janny stitcher but with a y y a n y anyway um several weeks ago i won her giveaway um and um and it, you know, I'm in Alaska, she's in Mexico. So it took a while for it to get here. Um, but let me show you what she sent me. First off, primarily the giveaway was for a mermaid pattern and another pattern. And I think probably most people entered the giveaway for the mermaid pattern. And I will definitely do the mermaid. I haven't ever done a mermaid. Well, except for the little mermaid in the in the shores of Hawkorn Hollow. But I've never done a full mermaid pattern. And so I'll definitely do that, but um, it was actually the other pattern she was given away that um, that was my real reason for entering the giveaway. But she sent me this, um, presumably made by her, a project bag, a nice little project bag. I haven't, I don't have any project bags. This is my first project bag. Um, I've avoided the whole project bag thing because I have so many whips, and um, and I don't want to buy forty project bags. <laughs> <laughs> but I will I, I love this I will I will use this and appreciate it and so um, I've got everything she sent me in here so not only did she send me the um, the two patterns but she sent me several other little unexpected things and she sent me and she sent me a card um, a very pretty card um, she's just a she's just a really a really um, nice person. Um, I mean, not just because she gave me stuff, but I love watching her videos. She just comes across so personable and she has such a beautiful smile and her work is so beautiful and um, and she's just a real pleasure to watch. And she um, has a brand new video out um, that I haven't got to watch yet. I just discovered it this morning and I will be, I will be watching that today. Um, so then she sent me, um, here's the mermaid pattern which is beautiful, and I'm definitely going to do that. Not sure what fabric I'll do it on yet. I'm not in a hurry to start this. Um, I definitely will do this. It calls for quite a few beads, as a lot of Mill Hill things do. This is, this is beautiful, though. Um, I will not do the skin one over one on a mermaid, no. No, no, no. Um, the pattern that I was, and you know, again, um, cross-stitch photography, this, and it's not even a photograph of the, of the completed work, but this, um, this pattern does not look very exciting in this picture, but, um, Johnny, Jenny showed hers, and, um, and I was like, oh, wow. And I think she switched hers up a little, like use different threads or whatever. And I don't know what I'll do. I might just do it like it, as it's called for. But, um, when I saw hers, when I saw her real live piece, um, it was a completely different story. You know, these, um, I don't know why these companies don't take nice photographs, um, and show us. Um, it does list BMC. This is a French, I believe this is a, yeah, this is a French pattern. Um, and it calls for about seven different colors of, um, of DMC, which isn't bad. Um, and I might do it just like it's, just like it shows, because you know me, I kind of like to do it how, how, um, how it tells you to. Um, but that, this is the one I was really looking forward to. 
So those are the two patterns she sent me, which I knew I was going to get. I did not know I was going to get the lovely project bag. I did not know that I was going to get any of the other things that she sent. Um, a postcard from um, Morelia, Mexico, um, where she lives. Um, and I love these. You know, I really like... Um, I, you know, I said I don't, I don't like bobbinating, etc. I, sorry, things are tangled. Um, heh. hang on just a minute. Um, I, I have many different ways of organizing a whip. I've used, um, those, are they called Paco? Paco um, organizers, I've um, used floss away bags, I've bobbinated, I, now my latest thing is I use those little bags. Um, but I also really enjoy, for a project that doesn't call for a lot of different, um, different threads, I enjoy thread organizers. I don't have fancy ones, but I've used, um, these are my first fancy ones. I have used, um, if I, I don't collect, because I stitch in hand, I don't collect needle minders. But this is the kind of thing I might collect. <laughs> I like using thread organizers. These, for smaller projects, these kinds of thread organizers are um, are are great. Um, I say that even though these are my first fancy ones I've ever had. But I do use the Loron, I've showed you before, I do use the Loron um, organizers for some things. And um, and I like it. They Those work really well. But these little, these little fancy ones really call to me. I wouldn't mind... You know, having like some of you all collect hundreds of needle minders, I wouldn't mind having a ton of of these in different styles and um, use them use them in my all my projects. Um, my only reservation about them is, I guess you could get little stickers or something. I'm wondering, does anybody know? Um, I'm guessing that like. Um, if you wrote on these, I mean, they almost look like, um, you look like you could write on them and wash them off, but, um, in something, you know, um, but, um, that's my only thing is, um, barring little stickers or whatever, um, you, you certainly wouldn't want to just use one, one of these one time and throw it away. So, um, um, you would need to do something to label the threads, right? And la yeah, I would for sure. Cause I do so many different projects at a time and I put them things away and come back to them. I would never remember what things were um, if I didn't have it stickered or something. So that's my only reservation about these. I'm guessing I could get little, like little dot stickers, like the garage sale, sale stickers, dot stickers and stick them on um, and peel those off and wash these off afterwards. I'm thinking that would work. If anybody uses these and does something clever, um, to label their threads. Um, I would like to know, but these are really pretty. I, I like them and I'm, I'm pretty excited to have these little things. I will definitely be using those. Um, she also sent me, um, so I, this is DMC. It says L 47. I'm actually not 437 DMC. I'm not sure what this is. I didn't look closely at this because I got this. I opened it. I looked at it real quick and then I put it away to show to you guys. I don't know what this is. L437 is what it says on it, the DMC. Um, it's not variegated. It feels different. Um, and it's um, and it's got a different label on it. Um, I don't know if that's just because it's Mexico or what, but I don't know what the L four thirty seven is. I should have looked it up. I didn't realize until I, until I got it that that was the case. It might be like it almost feels like it could be a wool or something. You know, it's definitely not a satin or, and it's not a pearl, but it's something. It is something different. It feels it feels very different, and it's something I'm completely unfamiliar with. So if anybody knows, I'll of course look it up. But if anybody knows what L four thirty seven or what the L means for DMC, because I, I don't know, I'm at a loss. I've never seen that before. Um, this is another DMC, it's uh, not... Okay, this is all kinds of new for me. This is DMC 94. 
Um, this is the first I've seen of, of um, single digit numbers for DMC. Oh, now this though, no, my eyes are playing tricks on me, right? Or is that, oh, you know, I think that that's actually, there's some variegation in there. So yeah, there's some greens and lighter greens. Anyway, <laughs> I should have looked at these things more closely. I just saw the pile, a couple of DMC threads and I just figured they were DMC. Um, this is 69. So these are, these are apparently variegated. So I think both of these are variegated. Um, um, but they don't have the numbers that I thought like the Caloris has on them. So, um, these are, these are news to me, but, um, these are very pretty. They feel like, unlike this other, unlike this one, these feel like standard DMC cotton floss. Um, okay. So there, um, enough about that. I'll have to do some looking up because I sound like an idiot right now. Um, so these are, I believe these are a hand dyed by Janny. Um, and, um, one of them is coral. Oh my goodness. Look how pretty that is. And I watched a video of hers where she shows she shows herself dying um dying threads and um and it, it that's wonderful. It's one of those things that again makes it makes a process look um look unintimidating and like I could actually do it. Um that is pretty. She says this is a fairy. She's calling it coral, and it says it's part of the fairy series. That is so beautiful. I'm gonna definitely have to find something to do with that because that is gorgeous. Um, and then we have this is Mosco, M O S G O is what she's calling this. It says in the woods series. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. I love those greens and browns. Wow. She, Janny is just really talented. And where does she find the time to do this stuff? I can't even find time to get out my writ dye and dye one cheap piece of fabric. Um, and she's finishing all these amazing things and working obviously full time and, um, and hand dyeing her own flosses and fabrics. She's amazing. Um, this is all, another one in the fairy series and it's called Hechizo, H-E-C-H-I-Z-O that those that's pretty cream and creams and blues and grays and the colors are showing up pretty good on the on the camera that's pretty accurate thanks to the filmmaker husband okay and um oh oh yeah this is a um this is a um keychain from her from her town look at that that's pretty huh keychain from from her uh from Morelia, Mexico. I don't even know if I'm saying that. Morelia, Morelia, I don't know. Um, I grew up 20 minutes from the Mexican border and I am still woefully ignorant of Spanish, unfortunately. And finally, she sent me um, a couple of small hand dyed fabric pieces. This one to me looks like a 14 count. These, both of these look like, I'm gonna do something Halloween-y on this. Look at that. This would be great for a smallish Halloween piece. Look at that, those colors. That's about a, I think that's, it looks like it's a 14 count Ada. Um, and wow, that's great. Somebody, um, I don't know why I never thought of this before. Um, Drew, um, Weezy Studios. He talked about, in one of his most recent videos, he talked about wanting to make a Halloween tree. And duh, Halloween tree. Um, anyway, a Halloween ornament would be um, maybe even two. You'd probably fit one on the top and one on the bottom. Um, a couple of small Halloween pieces. That would, Those would be great on this fabric. I'm gonna um, start thinking about a Halloween tree. <laughs> mine will be up year round. <laughs> Drew might only put his up at Halloween, but I will put mine up year round. And then this one, I mean, it'll, it, this would be great for almost any primitive. This looks like an 18 count to me. I'm pretty sure, it, these aren't labeled, but I'm pretty sure that this is an 18 count. Um, yeah, it looks a little too fine for, for 16 count and it's not 22 count, I don't think. So this is, this is an 18 count, I'm pretty sure. And this will probably, for me, probably have Halloween something or other on it too. 
Um, but this, you know, it's basically a, probably a coffee dye, um, but this would be just great for almost anything primitive. Um, so, you know, you know, I sound like a broken record, but it's amazing. Um, thank you, Jenny. Um, you know, it was great to get the, the two patterns, particularly the one French one that I was so excited about, but I had no idea you were going to send me all this, this other thoughtful, lovely stuff. And, um, and you're, you're dying of your, of your threads and your fabrics. Um, you just do beautiful work and I am really, really always impressed by, by the work you do, um, and what you have time for. Um, so thank you very much. And if you all are not watching Janny, go watch Janny. And, um, okay, so that's it for the stuff I got. Um, let's talk about whips. So it's been three weeks and I have not started anything. I, I'm, I've worked on five things. I've made lots of progress. I didn't finish anything, but I have not started anything, which I'm, um, I'm actually very proud of. I don't know how long that'll last, but and you may recall, or you may not recall from my last video, I said, um, I started four things, which was that my last video? I can't remember. Maybe it was the time before. Anyway, um, eh, I, um, I, um, this time I managed to restrain myself and just get good progress in on five of my, of my current whips as opposed to starting something new. And first I'm going to show you, um, my progress on shores. I finished the fourth block, which I'm super happy about. Um, I won't show you a picture cause, um, this is going to be just easy to just, to just, can't get my bag open to describe. So I won't bother to show you a picture. Um, but when you last saw it, um, I had finished blocks one, two, and three, and in the last three weeks, I started and finished the fourth block. It says, the moon above will guide my love while he's at sea away from me. There's a small mistake in here that I'm not going to fix. I messed up on this star down here. I miscounted in one spot and I was almost the way through it. And, you know, it looks fine. The stars are irregular anyway and nobody can tell the difference. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm leaving it. It wasn't worth the trouble to, to rip it out and re-put it in just like they, just like they charted it because mine was just as good, I felt. So, um, so that's the fourth block. And I am actually, so I'm officially a third of the way through with this project, which makes me pretty happy. Um, I've been, um, you know, plugging away at it and I'm actually going to do the center block next because if I can finish that center block, I will be officially halfway through with this project. And, um, and if I can manage to get that, to get to that point before, um, before I start Halloween at Hawkorn Hollow, I think I will feel really good about starting Halloween at Hawkorn Hollow. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do that center block next, and then I'll do the other blocks around it afterwards. Um, because when I get that center block done, 50% of the way through on a project that sometimes feels like you're never gonna finish. So I'll feel really great about that. I'm pretty happy with my third of the way through too. So um, let's see, coffee break. I worked on one of my coffee break projects, um, not the soda stitch one, the design works one. And again, I won't show you a picture of this because um, I started and completed a block basically of it. So it's easy to, to tell you where I was. When you last saw it, I had the first three blocks done and now I have the fourth one. I love this project. I love the colors. Um, it's really a nice design. Um, you know, design works, you know, you, you kind of think they're, they put out crappy fabric and some of their threads are, some of their threads are not as good a quality as others. It's, it's a strange mix. They don't use one kind of thread. You can tell their thread is, you know, who knows what, but I think some of it feels like DMC and some of it is not DMC. And, um, you can um, you can tell the difference, and so as you're working, some of the thread is really soft, and some of it is um, some of it feels a little bit like anchor, like it's a little little 
um, phrase a little extra, like anchor phrase a little bit more than DMC generally. And some of it feels just like DMC and some of it is something other than either anchor or DMC. And so as you're stitching, you can, you can, you know, you can definitely tell differences between, between the threads and which is a little strange. Um, but, um, they all work fine and the colors are beautiful and the designs are nice. So don't be afraid to try out design works kits cause, um, cause they're not terrible. They're not, they're not, you know, perfect, but they're not, but they're pretty decent and they, and uh, you know, they make a nice picture. So, okay. So, uh, next I will show you my progress on my donut stitch. I made a good chunk of progress on using some of my cone of 3808 and I will show you a picture of it now. Where I was, this is where I was when last you saw it. And I have, um, before, I had done the first two pages of 3808, just the one color 3808, of which I told you I bought a cone. If you haven't watched my last video, you might go back and watch it. I talk about I talk about cones um, in that video, um, which if you you might find that interesting if you um, are not aware of cones or are contemplating purchasing them. So I had done the first two pages out of twelve of 3808 and now I've done all of the third page and most of the fourth. I kind of burned out before I could finish the fourth page. So here is where I'm at. You can really start to see some of the characters. This is really fun and easy to work on but you know it's one color so after a while you get a little get a little tired. Um, so, um, so I am almost a third of the way done with um, with this first color. <laughs> So <laughs> many, many more hours to go. Um, so that is Donut Stitch's Alice in Wonderland. Um, let's see, next, um, I worked on Grandmother's House and I was really glad I took this one out because um, let me show you a picture of where it was before. Picture of Grandmother's House, where you saw it before. And, um, I made quite a good chunk of progress on it and um, you know I'm really surprised by the colors on this again cross stitch photography super lacking um, the colors on this are incredible you think it's pretty primitive when you look at it on the website and in the in the picture that they send with the pattern and you know it is um, but some of these colors are astonishing I mean um, here, let me show you. This is what I have now. So if you look at that red on the heart, the sort of hot reddish pink on the heart and in the, in the center there and some of those colors on the quilt, I actually double checked because I got out the thread. When I pulled it long ago, I didn't really even look at it. I just kind of pulled it and pulled it by the numbers and when I got out that thread, I was like, that can't be right. That is not a primitive color. That's like a hot, reddish, crazy pink. And, um, and I couldn't imagine that they would use that color in, in, this, in this project. Um, but it's beautiful and it looks wonderful against the blues and the greens. And, um, and these colors look great together. You know, the house is very sedate and lots of creams and gray greens and you know um blacks and stuff like that very quakery or amish rather colors and um but then there's these little spots of amazing color in this and it's just this is wonderful it's gonna be it's gonna be gorgeous and um and i couldn't be happier with the way it's turning out and um and now i want to do well, I want to start my I want to start that country store, but I got to get fabric for it. Um, I have fabric I could use for it, but I I want to get um, I want to get um, a bigger um, chunk of blue spruce and do it on that. I think um, as opposed to you know doing doing it on something else. Um, all right, and then um, the last project I worked on is my dimensions gold kit that my husband bought me for my birthday 
here's a picture of the finished project. Um, coastal View is what this is called. I am doing it on um, my own fabric, um, as opposed to as opposed to the fabric that came with the kit that was neither. Technically, it was large enough, but I was not comfortable with the size and um, and just stiff and crap. So um, here is a picture of where it was before. I made a ton of progress on this, and I think I might actually be finally getting the hang of these stupid half stitches. Um, you know, I think I mentioned before that I struggle with counting for some reason with the half stitches, but I did a lot of half stitching on this, and I'm getting better, I think, at counting half stitches. And when you don't make counting mistakes, half stitches um, take you half the time of full stitches, and so you can get a lot of a lot done in a short short order when you're not making counting errors. Okay, let me, uh, this fabric is very, um, I love it, but it's um, very see-through. And so I'm trying to fold it up here to make you able to better, better see what's going on here. Um, you don't see so much light through it. Well, that's just gonna have to do. So all of those mountains and a lot of the greenery that you see scattered around that is all in half stitches. And uh, this might be showing up a little too bright on this um, on this uh, on this camera right now. But um, I think it's washing out a little bit. But I got a lot done. So I'm um, I'm real happy with that. I got a little bit burnt out though, so um, I might be putting this one away for quite some time. Um, yeah, we'll see. Who knows when it might call to me. I'm putting it away until it calls me again. So those are the five things I worked on these last three weeks. Um, plans. I don't make a lot of plans, but it is coming up on, um, we're getting real close to November. And in a few weeks, I'm going to put up my Christmas tree. And I want to have my Dimensions Rudolph ornaments finished for that Christmas tree. So, I only have one left, and they take me three to four days to stitch each of those ornaments. So, in the next two weeks, I'm going to tentatively try to finish. It is totally not calling to me, but I really want those on my Christmas tree this year, and I'd like to have them ready to go up on the Christmas tree when we put our Christmas tree up. So, I really need to get, if not this two weeks, then in the next two weeks, for sure, um, I need to get that... Um, those um that last ornament done so that I can cut them out and and um put the hanger on them and also then when I do when I get those done I will be doing a giveaway on the pattern for that so um so that is my plan um and I may take a short break on shores we'll um we'll see um that last fourth block wasn't wasn't um was pretty easy compared to the previous block so I actually didn't feel burnt out on it when I um, when I stopped but that center block is something else so I am gonna try to make myself um, do a little bit of stitching on shores I don't anticipate finishing that center block anytime soon if I finish that center block by Christmas Day I will be very happy with myself because then I know that I'll feel pretty good about starting um, Halloween at Hawker and Hollow without without any reservations, without feeling like, oh my God, what am I doing starting this thing when I haven't even finished, um, when I haven't, you know, when I'm not even halfway through Shores of Hawkeye Hollow. So, um, that's it for me today. Um, I'm going to, um, I'm going to go watch Janny Stitch's latest video and I'm going to watch Jimmy Floss do because he has put out a fifth video. He, I'm going to go watch him corrupt the schoolhouse stitcher because in this fifth video he's interviewing the schoolhouse stitcher. And, um, and so I'm sure that that's going to be entertaining and I'm sure that I'm going to feel like a very bad person after I'm done watching that video, but I'm equally sure that I'm going to laugh my ass off. So I'm going to go do that and I got a fridge to clean and laundry to do and other un unfun stuff to do. And then, um, and then later on today, maybe I'll start something new or, or maybe not, but, um, Anyway, thank you all for watching and uh, and uh, commenting and liking and subscribing. Oh, I did it again. Um, in case you're completely new to me, 
Um, I am on Instagram. Uh, my name is Christine. And I am on Instagram at CMD586. That's Cat Mother Dog 586. Okay, thank you guys. I'll see you hopefully in two weeks. Cross your fingers that I don't get another cold. Bye bye.